All right, thank you, Lena. All right, so good afternoon. Thank you for joining um, the Discover Plan Launch Session on CaliforniaColleges.edu's interactive data-informed tools and how they can help support in-class and virtual post-secondary planning. Um, so before we dive in, um, I did want to give you an overview um, of what we'll be covering in today's session. Um, so first, um, we'll start with an introduction to the CaliforniaColleges.edu platform. Um, and then talk a little bit about the California College Guidance Initiative. We'll then move into um, the overview of the college and career exploration tools um, that are available, um, and then um, dive a little bit deeper into the academic planner. Then finally, um, I will highlight um, the different college and financial aid um, application integrations um, that are available. Um, I do want to name um, that this uh, presentation is going to focus on all of the tools and um, resources and features that are available for free um, via open access. However, towards the end of the session, um, I will talk a little bit about um, some of the data informed tools that are available to districts who partner. Um, and there will be um, a Q&A session at the end, as well as also um, throughout, there will be sprinkled um, some pauses. Um, so that way, as you have questions that are coming up um, as I'm presenting the material, you will have an opportunity um, to surface those um, at those times. Um, so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get started. Um, so what is the CaliforniaColleges.edu platform? So it's a powerful data um, informed platform um, that is a one stop shop for many different users. Um, so um, it's available to middle and high school students um, where they have um, tools um, and resources and information um, to create a well informed plan for their life after high school. Um, it's also a place where they can launch all of their California public college applications as well as FAFSA and or the California DREAM Act. Um, there's also um, information available to parents around college, career, and financial aid, um, so that way they can help support their child throughout that planning process, as well as also monitor um, their progress towards um, the creation of that plan. And then finally, um, there are also um, tools and features available to educators um, to help um, inform their students about their post-secondary options, um, as well as also being able to meaningfully track um, student progress um, on the actual platform. And we'll dive into what um, those tools and resources are um, in just a minute. Um, and so CCGI, um, so the California College Guidance Initiative, we are an equity focused nonprofit that's housed within the Foundation for California Community Colleges. Um, and we're also, also partially funded by the state of California. Um, and we have two primary objectives. Um, so first for all high school seniors to graduate with clear post-secondary goals and a plan for how to achieve them. Um, and then second, um, developing a reliable way to um, transmit um, student transcript data so that way it follows them from K-12 um, to whatever post-secondary institution um, they attend in order to hopefully decrease a lot of the barriers um, that we see students face um, in the college um, application, admission, and placement process. All right, so now they have a background of uh, the CaliforniaColleges.edu platform and CCGI who manages the CaliforniaColleges.edu platform. Um, we're gonna move into an overview of the college and career exploration tools. But before that, um, I do have a quick Zoom poll just to get a sense of what you currently know um, about student access to the platform. Um, so in just a minute, I'm gonna go ahead and launch that poll. Um, and it's a true or false question, or um, oops, I actually launched the wrong poll, sorry. Now you should be viewing the poll. It's a true or false question. Um, so the question is, um, or the statement um, is only students can create their account on californiacolleges.edu. If you can just please take a couple of um, moments um, to select your answer. Thank you. All right, so the audience is split. Um, so the answer is actually false. Um, so um, in addition to students being able to create their account on californiacolleges.edu, um, educators also have the ability to create accounts for their students. It actually is the preferred method. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, as we progress through the presentation. Um, but the other thing that I want to name here before I start diving into the uh, tools and resources that are available is that students must be 13 years or 
folder in order to create an account. Thank you everyone for participating. Um, and so with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about um, the associated curriculum. So um, available on the platform um, are grade level activities um, and associated with every grade level activity is a lesson plan. Um, so the thinking behind this is to provide students um, a guided and a structured way um, to, explore the, to explore the platform um, based on their um, age level. Um, and so every grade level activity and associated lesson plan um, includes um, trackable uh, actions. Um, so a student will complete something um, at the end of the activity that can be um, reported on um, that you can pull as an educator. Um, they were also designed um, to be sequential and, um, and build on each other, um, but they're also flexible enough. Um, so that way, um, no matter what a student's entry point is on the platform, um, um, they can still follow along with the lesson plan um, and they are aligned um, to common core and 21st century standards. Um, so students can access these grade level activities um, within the home page um, of their account. And when I uh, demonstrate um, the uh, college and financial aid application integration integrations, um, I will also um, highlight um, where students can access those. All right, moving on to the career assessments. Um, so um, one of the um, natural first places for a student to begin their career exploration on the platform is through a career assessment. Um, and we have um, a number of different ones available depending on um, the student's grade level. Um, so interest profiler um, is available uh, to all students, both middle and high school. It can be taken an unlimited number of times um, and it helps students identify their interest in six career-based areas and then explore um, careers that match their interests. Another assessment that we have is learning styles inventory. This one is only available to middle school students. It can only be taken a maximum of three times. Um, and that is um, a limit that's enforced by um, the vendor that, um, that we received the um, assessment from. Um, and learn in learning styles, the student is able to identify um, what their needs are in terms of learning um, as it relates to um, environmental, physical, emotional, and sociological. Um, so that way students can better understand um, themselves um, and advocate for that. Um, another assessment that we have is multiple intelligences. This one is only available to high school students. Um, also can only be taken a maximum of three times and it helps students identify their potential in nine different areas of intelligence. And then again, explore um, recommended careers based on their strengths. Uh, and then another assessment that is available is do what you are, um, and this one is a personality type assessment, very similar to Myers-Briggs, um, only available to high school students, can only be taken a maximum of three times. Um, the reason why that is for these three assessments, they all come from the same vendor. Um, and um, students can explore um, uh, careers um, and majors um, that are um, that are associated um, with others um, of the similar personality type um, that tend to be successful um, in those areas. Uh, and then finally um, is the work values assessment. This is actually one of our newer assessments um, that we um, have added to the platform um, based on um, educator feedback um, for another type of career assessment. Um, and work values is only for high school students. Um, and um, it's an activity to help them think about um, their interests, um, their personality, um, their values and their skills and kind of the intersection of those as it relates to the world of work um, and careers. Um, when a student completes a career assessment, um, their results are saved um, to their account so that way um, they can reference um, and review it later. Um, now, as students are um, exploring um, either careers that um, matched their assessments, they may also um, find themselves wanting to just um, explore and learn about careers um, that they're hearing about from um, their friends or from um, mentors, coaches. Um, and so um, a way that students can learn more about careers is by using the career search tool. Um, and as you can see in this screenshot, um, there are three different ways um, that a student um, can conduct a career search. Um, they can either search by keyword, they can search by industry, 
um, or they can search by Bright Outlook Occupation. Um, so what that means is it's flagging careers um, that are projected to have um, high growth um, or a high number of openings um, within a 10 year, within the next 10 year um, time period. Um, so once a student decides um, how it is that they want to search, um, you can see in the screenshot that the search that was conducted was by healthcare and social assistance um, in that industry. Um, there's uh, 166 results um, that pulled up, and here students can um, learn more about um, the careers that popped up, or they can even compare um, two careers. Um, there's, uh, you'll see right above um, that favorites column, um, that black compare button. Um, and in this results, um, screen, you can see um, that it does um, provide students just a broad overview um, of the matching career, um, the education level, the salary, that's a national median salary, um, the Bright Outlook occupation um, designation. Um, and then finally, there is that favorites column where um, if a student um, is interested in a specific career and wants to be able to return back to it later, um, they can click on that heart icon um, and save it um, to their account. Um, one thing I also want to note here that can sometimes be confusing um, is that for education level, you will see that there are multiple sometimes um, levels listed there, um, and that's to highlight to students that there are different entry points that they can have within a career. Um, so it kind of, so what, essentially what it's doing is it's showing the lowest level of education that would be required um, to enter that career and then um, typically what the highest level of education is. Um, and then from within the screen, um, the student um, favorited acute care nurses. Um, they can actually click on the title um, and they'll be taken to a career fact sheet where they can learn more about acute care nurses um, in regards to roles and responsibility, um, matching or, or not matching, but um, majors that are typically um, that are typically completed by students that enter that career, as well as colleges that offer um, those specific majors. Um, so there's another wealth of information that they can um, that they can gather um, by clicking and um, going to the career fact sheet. All right, so I did mention that within the career fact sheet, they can learn about majors that are associated with that specific career. Um, however, um, if a student um, doesn't follow that trajectory, um, they can also go to the major search tool. Um, and so uh, you can see here um, in this screenshot, um, an example of um, a major search tool or a major search that was conducted. Um, so there's only one way to search for majors. Um, it's a type look ahead um, feature. And as the student is typing, um, it will present to them um, suggestions based on what they're typing. Um, so um, if they were typing engineering, they would see um, a number of different um, related um, majors to engineering um, show up. Um, in this example, the students selected business administration, management and operations. Um, you can see that it pulled up 14 results um, and um, the search results um, will show the major, um, a description of that major, and then they can um, view colleges that offer that specific major. Um, and then again, they have that favorite column where they can save it for later. So for this specific student, um, they saved purchasing, procurement, acquisitions, and contracts management. And then finally, um, we have the college search tool. Um, so if the student would have clicked, I'm actually gonna go back. If the student would have clicked on the view colleges, um, it would actually take them directly here to the college search tool and then it would pre populate some of these filters um, based on um, the program and major which you can see as an option here on the left hand side. Um, however, again, if a student um, didn't get here um, through the major search tool, um, they can also um, come um, and find the tool um, on the platform themselves um, and conduct a college search um, on its own. Um, what you see here is actually the advanced search with all of the filter options um, visible, um, but uh, you can also condense this search tool um, and have it so that way it doesn't show all of the filters, which might be overwhelming for middle school students. Um, 
you can see um, that you can search um, a college by a keyword, and then um, you can conduct a national search or a California only, even though um, the platform is named California Colleges. Um, we actually house um, all colleges, nonprofit, um, uh, with the exception of for-profit, um, every other um, two-year, four-year, um, or certificate program um, is available for a student to search here. Um, and then uh, a student can um, customize their search um, by selecting um, the filter options um, that make the most sense for them. So they can um, restrict um, or refine um, by size, type of environment, degree options, um, or application type um, to find the best fit. All right, so I know that that was a lot of information. Um, so uh, I wanna first pause for questions before we move on. And again, feel free um, to use the Zoom chat um, or to unmute yourself um, if you have a question. All right, so uh, I don't think there are any questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. All right, so now we're going to move from the college and career exploration piece um, to some of the other um, tools and features that are available to students. Um, so um, one common theme throughout um, was that students can favorite or save um, colleges, careers, and majors. All of that is saved within their My Plan. So this is the one digital um, space, you can think of it as a portfolio, um, where all of the students' activity um, throughout the platform um, is housed and tracked. Um, so the My Plan um, is broken up into eight different sections. Um, there's the Academic Planner, um, where they can um, track the coursework that they have completed and then um, plan for future coursework um, or for the years ahead. Um, the My College Plan, where they save um, the colleges that they're interested in, they can start some of their applications from here and save their majors, um, their favorite majors. Um, the Career Plan is where um, their saved careers are housed, um, as well as their career assessment results. Um, the My Financial Aid Plan is where students um, can not only learn about some of the financial aid that's available to them, such as FAFSA, California Dream Act, Cal Grants. Um, but there's also tools um, available there as well um, that they can use. Um, the My Goal section um, is a structured area for them um, to uh, identify um, academic, college, career, financial aid um, related goals. And then the My Journals is a space for them to reflect um, on academic, college, career, financial aid topics. Um, the grade level activities that I mentioned earlier in the curriculum um, are also um, aligned to the My Plan. And the way that that works is um, there's typically in every activity three different um, sections. Um, and so every activity will have them complete some, some, uh, some form of action, um, but they always end with either a goal or a journal. Um, so there are default prompts in both of those spaces um, that align with the grade level activity. The My Experiences tab um, is where students can um, track their extracurriculars um, and uh, work-based experiences that they have. Um, there is a lesson plan that ties in the My Experiences um, with building a resume. Um, so that's um, one example of how that tab could be used. Um, and then finally, the My Documents um, is a space where students can upload um, uh, things like their resume, um, college application essays, scholarship essays. Um, and as an educator, if you have an account, um, you can view their My Plan and you can actually access um, some of those documents um, that they upload and that they share there. All right, so now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the academic planner. Um, so this is where students can intentionally begin planning their high school coursework. Um, students have access to this um, beginning in the seventh grade. Um, and you can see that um, what they can um, plan um, and track is their high school coursework. And so the way that they do that um, is they would uh, select um, a subject area and a grade level. And so when they do that, this um, pop-up appears. Um, and there, uh, you can see there's two different ways that a student can um, enter in a course. 
So there's this um, type look ahead, the select your course, it's a drop down, and um, it's actually pulling from your high school's um, approved A through G course list on the course management portal. Um, so they're going to be able to view any A through G course there. If they're unable to locate um, or find the course in that drop down because it's not on the course management portal, then the student can manually enter in the course name. And then they're going to select um, the term type. So the term types that are available are all of the CSU approved term types. Um, then they're going to select the term that they're in, fall or spring, if they're in semesters. And then for status, um, they have three different options. Um, so they can um, they can enter in um, planned, enrolled, or completed. Um, so that is the way that a student um, would be utilizing or using the academic planner. All right, so now we're gonna move from the student experience um, to just a brief highlight of what's available to an educator. Um, so as you're supporting your students virtually or in the classroom and having them complete um, these college and career exploration activities, um, you, if you have an account, are able to pull reports um, and track um, what activities students are completing on the platform. So that way you can either follow up, um, have a conversation as you're helping them plan their coursework for future years, um, if you're planning um, uh, events um, and having guest speakers, um, you can pull um, a lot of this information um, from within the educator dashboard. So what you see here um, is a screenshot of the report management tool. And the way that it works is you select a category. So the categories um, are many, but um, some examples um, are college, career, financial aid, um, accounts. Um, so if you had a guest speaker that was coming and you wanted to know um, which students were interested um, in the healthcare industry, for example, um, you could select a report um, to track um, which students have um, favorited, what careers students have favorited. So that way you can get a sense of which are the students that might be interested um, to hear from someone in the healthcare industry. That's just one example of a report type. Um, there are many others. Um, and in addition to being able to pull, pull reports, you can also manage student accounts. Um, so if a student is having a hard time signing in because they forgot their email username or need um, their password reset, um, that is something that you could also do from here. All right, any questions before we move on? And again, feel free to use the Zoom chat um, or to unmute yourself. All right, so if there are no questions, I'm going to go ahead and move on and start talking about launching applications from californiacolleges.edu. Um, again, would like to hear from you. Um, how do you currently track college and financial aid applications? Um, I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. And again, if you can just take a few moments um, to answer. I'll wait just a few more, a few more seconds. All right, thank you. All right, so um, unanimously um, amongst the group is um, you ask students um, to tell you, um, and that's a very common um, method, right, um, for tracking um, college and financial aid applications. One of the benefits um, of CaliforniaColleges.edu, oops, um, is uh, not just for students, um, but also for you as an educator. Um, so um, via the CaliforniaColleges.edu platform, um, students can launch um, CCC Apply, Cal State Apply, FAFSA, and California Dream Act directly from within their accounts. And if their student account was created by an educator, that typically, or it will require um, the educator to include their statewide student ID or their SSID. This is the critical uh, data point that allows for us to track the student's application um, process. So we, so if the student launched for californiacolleges.edu, their account was created by an educator and it included their SSID, 
then the student would be able to see the status of whether that um, application was in progress, whether it's been completed. And then as an educator, you could track via the educator dashboard um, how many of your students have completed a Cal State Apply application, a CCCC Apply application, um, FAFSA or California Dream Act. On this slide, you will see University of California. That is um, a, a feature that tracking the student's application um, status um, is actually only available to partner districts. And I will speak to that um, in more detail when I um, get to partnership. Um, but what is important for you to know is that um, via um, open access or all of the tools and resources that I've talked, up, up, uh, talked about up until this point, that includes CCC Apply, Cal State Apply, FAFSA, and California Dream Act. And with that, um, I'm actually going to um, demonstrate um, how a student could um, launch all of these from within a test student account. So I'm going to go ahead and move into californiacolleges.edu. Can everyone still see my screen? You can just use the chat feature to confirm. OK, perfect. Um, so uh, I'm at californiacolleges.edu. Um, I'm signing into a student test account. So I just want to reiterate that um, everything that you see here um, is fictitious student data. It's not a real student. Um, and this is a senior account. Um, I did mention earlier um, that I would highlight um, those grade level activities. Um, so as you can see directly from the homepage, um, as you scroll down, there are these blue bubbles. So these are the grade level activities. These blue bubbles look different for the different student accounts. So a 10th grade student would have different blue bubbles um, that associate with their grade level. Um, and to access the student worksheet that I mentioned, um, the student would click on the blue bubble. Um, and then by doing so, um, are gonna be taken to the task list. Um, and it's here that the student would download the student worksheet. Um, so here in the attachments column, um, they would click on the arrow icon. Um, and then what's gonna happen is um, depending on what device they're using. Um, so if they're using a Chromebook, um, this will download as a GDoc. If they're using um, any other um, type of device, um, like a regular laptop um, or a PC, um, it's gonna download as a Word document. So that's how they would access the grade level curriculum. Um, in terms of launching the applications, so the way that this works is they would actually go um, and um, they're gonna hover over college. Um, and then in the apply to college section um, is where all of the appropriate links are. So let's start with California Community Colleges. They click here. They're going to be directed um, to select um, the CCC college. Um, so for demonstration purposes, I'll select one, San Diego County, Palomar College. Um, then they're, you, they're going to see this, um, uh, this message here, just uh, letting them know um, that by launching um, from within their account, um, that um, their SSID um, will be shared with California Community Colleges. Like I mentioned earlier, it's the statewide student ID that allows um, for the reporting um, to track the application status. When I click launch, it's actually going to take me directly to um, Palomar's um, CCC apply page where the student would then create an account or sign in if they have an existing account. Um, okay, to launch um, Cal State apply, same steps are very similar. They're gonna hover over college, go to the apply to college section, but this time they're gonna click on the California State University application. Again, um, they're given um, this message to let them know um, what would be moving over. When they click confirm, Again, they're directed um, to Cal State Apply, um, where they're going to uh, either create um, a new account um, or um, sign into an existing account. And I do see there is um, a chat. And yes, all of these three options are available if the school is using the free account. All right, so that's CCC Apply, Cal State Apply. Now for financial aid. 
Um, so uh, they're going to hover over financial aid. And then in the apply for financial aid section, um, they're either going to click on FAFSA or California Dream Act, whichever one is uh, most appropriate for their circumstances. If I click on FAFSA, what's going to happen is they're going to be taken um, to the FAFSA content page. And when they scroll down, you'll see there's this launch FAFSA button, um, which actually is only visible um, starting October 1st until June 30th. Um, so since we're in that window, student would click launch FAFSA. And then again, similar process, it's going to direct them right over to FAFSA, um, where they're going to create their FSA ID, um, or if they have one, sign in and um, continue their application. All right. One other thing that I just want to highlight um, before I move on is that for the Cal State Apply application, in addition to being able to track their application status, if the student completed their academic planner, so they're a senior um, and they have been tracking um, all of their completed coursework from ninth through 11th grade and have entered in um, their enrolled coursework for 12th grade, then when they get to Cal State Apply, they will have an option to be able to import the coursework that they entered into their academic planner into their application. Um, so that is another benefit um, for um, students launching from within um, their californiacolleges.edu account. All right. So now I'm going to move back to the PowerPoint. Um, so just to reiterate um, what the benefits are, um, so the California Colleges at EDU platform is truly a one-stop shop where students um, have um, a centralized and um, reliable place to launch all of their public higher education college applications um, and financial aid um, within the state of California. And then as an educator, you also have a centralized portal to track verified college and financial aid application status. Um, so that way you can um, follow up with students um, as needed, so not have to rely on the student self-report. Okay, so again, I've covered everything that is available um, for free um, via open access. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about what's available um, for districts who partner, which essentially is all of our data-informed tools. Um, so this is a table that highlights um, what's available for college and career planning, college and financial aid applications, and educator tools, um, and it has a side-by-side -side comparison of open access and partner. So as I mentioned, um, I covered a lot of what's in um, the open access column. As it relates to partner districts, so districts who partner um, have a data sharing MOU um, with CCGI. Um, and so what that allows for um, is for um, the sharing of the student transcript data. So um, someone um, at the district office, um, it's actually usually a few different folks, um, but somebody from the um, data team is going to share transcript data from the student information system that your district uses, and that will populate um, into the student's accounts. Um, and so the implications of that um, are, there's a couple of different implications. So um, number one, um, so students have access in addition to all of the other tools and resources, um, a transcript informed academic planner. So students are not manually entering in um, any of their completed or enrolled coursework. That's all coming in directly from the student um, information system. They also have access to CSU and UC eligibility tools to see whether they're making adequate progress towards meeting A through G for each of those systems. Systems. Um, and then in addition, um, when students launch their college and financial aid applications, um, there's some additional benefits um, because um, with CCC, we're able to actually send to the multiple measures placement service um, the students' um, transcripts so that way um, admissions or um, counselors at the community college um, can see um, their uh, completed um, English and math coursework to help with placement. 
Um, for calcium applied, there's actually verified course migration that happens because we're matching um, the coursework um, that's coming from the SIS to what um, is housed within the approved A through G course list for your district and school um, through CMP. Um, and then um, in addition to that, um, you also receive um, the ability to track student application status for UC apply. Um, and then um, additionally, um, with the receiving of the transcript file, um, we actually create all of the student accounts um, district wide. So educators um, do not have to create um, the student accounts, they're automatically created from the district file. Um, and so what this actually looks like, so I've been doing a lot of talking. Um, so this is uh, an example um, of the CSU eligibility tool. Um, so students, in addition to the academic planner, um, would see a calculation of their CSU GPA, um, their eligibility for CSU that takes into account both their GPA and um, their A through G completion. Um, and then they see um, a slightly different grid um, of their completed coursework. Um, it's through the lens of whether their coursework is a verified A through G course and whether they've completed it with a C minus or better, whether they have a verified A through G course that with a um, deficient grade of a D or lower. Um, and then it also will show them their non-verified um, A through G course grades, as well as um, courses that are being listed as A through G by um, within the student information system, but that were not found um, on the district's approved A through G course list. So what this necessarily means is that there's a lot of data cleanup work um, that we do with our partner districts to clean up those courses that are um, flagged as A through G um, within the district um, SIS, but that is not found on um, the approved A through G course list. Um, in addition to the students having access to these um, eligibility tools, as an educator, you also now have access to additional reports, um, such as how well are your students progressing towards meeting CSU. Um, there's a similar report for UC. Um, we parse them out um, because there are some slight differences um, in terms of those eligibility requirements. Um, and so this is a screenshot of an example of one of those reports where you can see a breakdown of students that are on target. Um, with unit and subject area requirements, um, and then on target, um, but um, have lower than 3.0 GPA, and then those students who are off target. Um, and then this visual just highlights um, the pathway um, of receiving your district's um, transcript data and how it moves um, through the platform into Cal State Apply, and then ultimately um, receives that um, verified transcript um, designation on the back end of Web Admit, um, which is what um, Cal State Apply um, admissions officers see on their end. So I know that was a mouthful. Um, I'm gonna move a little bit now from um, the tools and features that are available to some um, policy work that has some implications for how educators um, are utilizing our platform and how they can um, potentially use it in the future. Um, so as you may know, um, there is a cradle to career data system that's been proposed under Governor Newsom. Um, and uh, within that data system, there is this proposal um, to uh, to create uh, instead of creating um, a new data system, using our existing data systems within the state of California um, to help close gaps and improve student outcomes. And there's two primary components to it. There's an analytical data piece, um, and then there's an actionable data um, component um, with operational tools that would directly um, benefit students and families. Now, um, I'm happy to announce um, that in the trailer bill um, that was just launched um, earlier this week, um, it includes official language um, that would um, scale the access to CCGI's data-driven um, tools um, statewide um, in California. So what does that mean exactly? So um, what that means is that the state of California will provide subsidized CCGI partnerships to all K-12 districts serving 9th through 12th grade students. Um, and that new subsidi uh, subsidies would um, begin in 2022, 23, and that all partnerships 
will be in place for eligible K through 12 districts by July 1st, 2020 or 2026. So that's all the information I have right now about what that what that means and what that would look like. Um, but if you have any questions, um, I can funnel them um, to the appropriate staff member um, at CCGI. All right, so with that, um, I want to talk a little bit about what the steps are for um, having an open access educator account. Um, so if you don't have an educator account, um, what the process would look like is you would go to californiacolleges.edu and you'd follow the, the steps. So first you're going to click sign in, um, which is in the upper right hand corner of the home page. As you can, um, and then in the screenshot, you'll see right below sign in, um, there's a register link. Um, and you would click there, um, you would complete um, the three different steps. Um, and once we receive it, um, if your district has a signed AB 1580 form on file, then we'll connect you to um, the appropriate person at your site um, that can create your account. Um, if your district does not have a signed AB 1584, um, then we'll ensure that um, that's um, in place um, before we verify your employment um, and distribute your account. Um, so just as a recap, um, uh, having an educator account um, has a couple of different benefits. Um, so um, one of the main ones being that you can create accounts for your students. Um, and so by doing so, it helps streamline your efforts as opposed to having to rely on your students to create their own accounts and to do it correctly and accurately. Um, you are able to mass create student accounts, um, which in the end can help save you time because you can ensure that all of your students who need accounts have them. Um, and then it's cleaner data. So if your district were ever to become a CCJ partner, it makes linking those old and new accounts easier because as I mentioned before, um, when an educator creates an account, um, you can include their SSID, and that is the unique identifier that allows for tracking applications, but then also um, for reducing duplicate student accounts. All right, so I have one final Zoom poll, um, and it's going to launch right now. Okay, so um can educators access reports on verified application status a quick check for understanding if you can take just take a few moments to answer i almost have everyone i'm just going to wait a few more moments All right. So yes, <laughs> um, so that's correct. Um, so educators can access reports on verified application status um, as long as the SSID is included in the student account. All right, any final questions before I wrap up and end? No. Okay, so um, as you start using californiacolleges.edu, um, if you do have any questions, um, I do want to share um, what your next steps um, could be to get the support that you need. Um, so on the footer of every page on californiacolleges.edu, um, there is a help and a contact us section. So the help section um, has answers to frequently asked questions. Um, and if you don't find what you're looking for there, um, then I recommend you um, click on contact us where you would fill out a form um, and a staff member um, would um, reach out and follow up. Um, as an alternative, you can also email user support at californiacolleges.edu. And if you have any partnership inquiries, you can email partnership at californiacolleges.edu. Um, and if you're interested um, in um, additional virtual training, we have um, other sessions that go deeper into um, the educator dashboard, creating student accounts, um, and the platform overview, um, where we actually also include hands-on activities. Um, so to register, um, if you're interested in learning more, um, you can go to this um, page, which is californiacolleges.edu backslash and then virtual trainings open access. Um,
Um, and there is a question about, do you cover the Riverside County region? Um, so we do have a campaign called College Next, um, where we are working with both Riverside and San Bernardino counties. Um, so yes. Quick question, I'm sorry. Um, a lot of my teachers want to get started and they're trying to task the counselors with doing every single CCGI and we're a partner district, which is great. But I use this as a, as a way to help my teachers be able to start implementing it in the classroom. This link right here. Sorry, my question, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, my question was if my teachers want to start implementing this in the classroom, is this the link to give them so they can start learning how to uh, go through all the steps? We do, we provide everything. I just need them to start doing the lessons. Got it. So, yes. Uh, what district are you from? A Riverside, uh, a Palm Springs Unified School District. Palm Springs? Yeah, Palm Springs. Okay, so actually, um, because you're a partner district, I would direct them to our um, our partner virtual training, um, which um, I will go ahead and just demo um, since I have everyone uh, how to uh, get that link. So let me just exit out of here. Is dot edu. And you type in virtual trainings in the search bar. So you can access this without even being signed in. Um, because Palm Springs um, is a partner district, I would actually direct them here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share this link in the chat. So. There you go. Any other questions? No? All right. Oh, let's see. Thank you, Lena. Okay, so there's an evaluation form um, that's been shared um, in the Zoom chat. Um, so if everyone could take just a few moments um, to complete that, I would really appreciate it. Um, thank you for joining um, this afternoon session.